Hey, what's up? It's your girl, Neek, and you're tuned in to Neek at Night. And tonight, we're going to be talking about Meg the Stallion again. But this time, we're going to be talking about Rihanna's involvement in the situation and how people are coming for Rihanna, calling her a hypocrite, honey. They are calling Rihanna a hypocrite. They are recalling Rihanna all types of things. They are saying that she is being a bully right now. It's just a lot being said. We are about to get into all of that in just a moment. So make sure to hit that subscribe button if you have not already. Hit that notification bell so you're notified when I post these videos. And if you have not already checked out my website, neekatnight.com, I have your sexy pajamas, you know what I'm saying, waiting for you right now. Go ahead and check out my website, neekatnight.com, for your pajamas and your quarantine and chill needs. Now, let's get into this story. Okay, so as you guys know, we've been talking about the Meg Thee Stallion situation on a couple of videos and me being fed up with the assumptions of what was. And then Meg came forward and she gave bits and pieces, but still did not say who did it. She did not confirm that she was shot by Tori. And it's still yet a speculation, like a huge speculation that people have. Now, within this story, there is... Um, a person by the name of Drea, some of you guys know her from Basketball Wives, some of you guys may know her from dating Chris Brown, some of you guys may know her from dating Orlando. I mean, some of you, you know her from one way or another. And she was on a podcast and she made a joke or, and prediction as to what she felt like happened. For those of you guys who don't remember, I'm going to play it and then I'm going to show you how Rihanna fits into this situation. I predict that they had some sort of... Bobby and Whitney love that, you know, drove them down this snapped-esque mm. type of road. And mm. I'm here for it. I like that. I want you to like me so much you shoot me in the foot, too. Like, But as long as... <laughs> what the... Whoa! Uh, wait, no, no, that, I, 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 that is very Dre like Okay, so as you can see, she said that she wants a guy to love her so deeply that he shoots her in the foot. And for me, listening to it, number one, I took it as a joke. Number two, she was referring to herself in the situation, and she was referring to herself. And me, again, I didn't take it that big of a deal. But since she has made those claims, she was once a Savage Fenty brand ambassador. And since she made the claims and it was, you know, popularized that she said that. People started to try and contact Fenty and then they were just like, oh my God, I can't believe you have somebody like this working for you. Um, how can they make a joke? Bop, 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 bop. And then Fenty replies and says they've been made aware of it. And then it was noticed that she was unfollowed by Fenty. Now, a lot of times these blogs will show like, oh, this person was unfollowed by this person. And you really don't know if that brand was even following them to begin with. Like, what if they never even was following her? You know, I never know. But I'm just going to say, hey, she was unfollowed by Fenty. So that led a lot of people to believe that she had lost her endorsement deal with Savage X Fenty, which is Rihanna's brand. A lot of people felt for Drea. They're like, oh, my God, this girl apologized like three times. She went over and beyond apologizing and apologizing for what she said. And a lot of people didn't feel like she deserved to be dropped from her endorsement deal when the entire social media was making jokes about it. And nobody was having any of the energy for the males who were making jokes mainly and their jokes was even worse um drea's joke was talking about herself their jokes was basically talking about um meg you know so people were like she was basically saying the kind of love that she likes you know and she was talking about herself so you know a lot of people felt like it was wrong now after there was speculation as to whether or not she lost her endorsement deal she then posted up a photo and she said income and then she had the less than sign pointed to income and then greater than sign to outcome. And um, people were speculating about that being in relation to her possibly losing her brand deal with Savage Edge X Fenty. Well, today, Meg Thee Stallion has come forward and she is posing it up and promoting Savage X Fenty. And within her promoting Savage X Fenty by Rihanna, she also showed that Rihanna has sent her support. And she was showing that, you know, Rihanna has sent her a card. She's posting up this promo for Savage X Fenty. And it says, love y'all at Savage, Savage X Fenty. 
and at bad girl riri and she also like i said showed a note and in the note it says wishing you a full speedy recovery meg just know you got a whole crew over here sending good vibes your way love rihanna and the fenty um corp gang and so under that post rihanna had commented and she commented and saying gang with, you know, the whole uh, prayer, I guess, hand emoji. And a lot of people felt that that was very hypocritical of Rihanna. People were like, hold up, wait, we don't even have the full story. She didn't even say if Tori did it. Being that people seeing that it was possible that Drea got dropped behind this and then people were speculating that Meg got picked up. It was like, okay, so you dropped Drea you pick up Meg, which a lot of people are also saying that maybe she was already a brand ambassador before the shooting. But from the outside, majority speaking, they thought, okay, you drop Drea, you pick up Meg, and you don't have this energy for Tori. Like they felt like the inner, they, a lot of people didn't feel like this much energy should have went into Drea. A lot of people didn't feel like it was something that was worthy of her to lose the endorsement over. And people started to call Rihanna a hypocrite because she has openly worked with Fabulous, openly worked with other people who have been accused of domestic violence who actually were abusing women. And here Drea is somebody who just made a joke about it, not somebody who actually abused anybody, but somebody who just made a joke of it, you know, they were like, hold up, wait, you hired um, Fabulous for your Fenty concerts, he's working with you right after, um, you know, he knocked out Emily's teeth, and right after he did all those things, you worked with him, and then other people were like, you know, you worked with Chris Brown after, and so a lot of people were calling her a hypocrite, they felt like Meg has now turned into an opportunist. There was even people like, you know, I don't really, this this situation don't really feel right. A lot of people like once they seen that, they really shifted how they felt about the situation. Um, I'm gonna show you guys what some people are saying on social media and then I'll be back to tell you some more. Okay, so that was people feeling like, Rihanna, explain to us how an actual abuser can still work for you, but somebody who didn't abuse somebody can't. Like, you know, they were like, that's highly hypocritical. And I've seen a lot of people who were saying, you know, I love Rihanna. I could, she could do no wrong, but this just don't feel right because we don't even know the full ins and outs of the story. What do you guys think about it? Again, I also showed screenshots of people even calling Rihanna out for the fact that she has made ASAP of the face of Fenty skin for men. And they were like, you know, if we're going to be, you know, protecting black women and having a stance, it's kind of weird how you got somebody who made fun of Black Lives Matter being ASAP the face of the situation. He made fun of Black Lives Matter and black women, but yet he's the face. And then people were saying, you know, she picked and choose. She was pick being a picky and choosy in this situation. You guys let me know what you think. Do you think that Rihanna was being hypocritical or do you think that she was just protecting her brand, even though she still worked with actual abusers on this same brand like Fabulous for her Fenty skin concerts and things like that? While you let me know that, we're going to move on over to the story that Meg the Stallion came forward and stated. Um, for those of you guys who didn't see my video yesterday, I'm going to give you a refresher and then I'm going to tell you about the people who are even thinking that Meg the Stallion is not being truthful and forthcoming. I was shot in both of my feet and I had to get surgery to get the shit taken out, get the bullets taken out. But yeah, I had to get surgery. It was super scary. It was like just the worst experience of my life. <laughs> and it's not funny. 
and thank God that the bullets didn't touch bones. They didn't break tendons. Like I know, I know my mama, my daddy, my granny had to be looking out for me with that one, cause where the bullets hit at, it just it missed everything. But they, the motherfuckers, was in there. Okay, so as you can see, she said that she was shot in not one foot, but she was shot in both her feet. On top of her being shot in both feet, she said both times she did not get grazed by a tendon or a bone. Now, there's a lot of people on the internet who raised an eyebrow to that and they were saying, wait a minute, our feet are made mostly of bones. Actual bullets are a certain size and there's no way that an, a bullet can go in both feet and miss both times a bone and a tendon. Like there was a lot of people like, you know, I love Meg, I wish her well, but you know, it just doesn't make sense that her, like the story just doesn't add up. And then there are people like, you know, was it a BB gun that did it? I'm gonna show you some of those messages right now because there was a lot of people who was like, not just, just not feeling this story at all. And uh, I'm going to show you that and then I'll be back. She says she got hit on both feet, but the bullets ain't hit no bone. There's a lot of bone on your feet. 28 bones, 30 joints, tendons, ligaments, ain't nothing damaged, question mark. Then another person questioned whether or not this was a publicity stunt. They said, I think this is a publicity stunt. If Tory Lanez really shot her, he'd be in jail and not free. Now she online fake crying when she didn't even press charges. If he really shot her, I actually don't feel sorry because I believe the whole story is cap. Another person says, I don't believe a word. And then people commented under that and they said, something don't sound right. And then under that, someone says, right, not to bash her, getting shot, that's never okay. But the story just not making sense. I know these celebrities be lying hella. I just hope Tori okay and glad to see that she's back on social media or whatnot. Okay, and then this person gave their theory. They think that, you know, this situation is a cover up for Meg to have a repeat offense for domestic violence being that she was having a domestic violence situation before. So this person said, okay, let's gather what we know. First off, if you're shot directly in the feet, a police officer can differentiate between being shot and stepping on glass, which is what she originally told the police. Not until she got to the hospital and they had to remove bullet fragments that she changed her story. If somebody shoots me point blank twice, effing or not, I'm saying I got shot. Not I stepped on glass. If she wasn't whooping Tori's A and drunk, then why wouldn't she just say a N shot me? It's probably her prior history of going to jail for beating a boyfriend before would be a repeat offense. Now, Tori Lane's original charge was possession of firearm. In California, dispelling a firearm is also an offense, but that wasn't charged. Don't be so dialed in on trauma of her being shot that you ignore the facts that every action has a reaction. So it's not out of the realm of possibility that she was whooping a five to a hundred pound dude. A. So this person is thinking that this whole situation is a cover up for Meg. They're saying this don't add up, you know, I, the, the way she's given bits and pieces, it don't make sense. The police officer should be able to determine whether you are, you, got, you know, cut on glass or if you're actually shot. And then there was also people who were, you know, thinking that if she got shot, they were replaying when she got out of the car. And they were saying, how is it possible that she was able to walk on her feet if she got shot in her feet? Okay, so as you see that, there was a lot of people who was questioning the truth and the validity of what Meg Thee Stallion herself has came forward and said. Now, I'm going to be honest. When I listened to it, I said, hey, it's her word. That's all we got to go off of. Nobody else has spoken out. You know, this is only one side of the story. And there is three sides to a story. His, hers, and the truth. And we also got her friend that was there. Um... You know, that, but hey, this is her story. This is what she says. I'm not going to lie. When I listened to it, I was thinking like, hmm, I'm a gun owner. I know the size of my bullets. If I shoot somebody, I can't see that. I don't know how, how, but hey, she said that it was, it was angels. So, hey, I'm just going to go with her word. 
Okay, and so you had the people who said that it didn't make sense that she got shot in both of her feet and nothing happened in either of her feet. And they were saying, like, it kind of didn't make sense and yada, yada, yada. And then you had tons and tons and tons, and I'm tired of scream grabbing comments at this point. Um, you just have to take my word for it. They're out there, a ton of them. But there was a ton of people who still believed the story that Adam 22 from No Jumper said. So there was a um, podcast who came forward and they gave their version of what happened. And this was before Megan spoke and they said that Megan had put her hands on Tori. So even after Meg came forward and said, listen, I didn't, you know, put my hands on him. I didn't do this. You still had people People who thought that, you know, she wasn't telling the truth. They were like, you know, you're not really telling us nothing. There's a reason why you're being sketchy about this. And they didn't believe that it was because it was a traumatic event. They felt like she had something to hide. And people felt like she did, in fact, put her hands on Tori. If you guys missed the No Jumper um, podcast, I'm going to refresh your memory on what was said on there and then move to the next. But just showing you this so you know where people are getting the story that it was her that put her hands on him. This is where it comes from. So the, what I'm hearing, my version that I've heard from various people that have basically then trusted filtered sources? through AD, yes, very okay. trusted sources, is that Megan and Tori have been fucking. They've been chilling. They go to this house party. Kylie Jenner is there. I heard, depending on who you want to ask, that either Tori was showing too much attention to Kylie Jenner or Kylie Jenner was showing too much attention to Tori. Either way, Meg did not appreciate it. Meg, maybe at this point in her career, has a little bit of an ego. She's feeling sure. herself. She doesn't feel like she has to deal with any disrespect. I, I heard that. Meg was violating his ass that they got into a fight that was like bad and i heard that she she was like really shitting on him like really like i could see her disrespecting the fuck obviously this doesn't justify no 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 no. but that's what i heard is that it was like it was bad like like the the altercation that they were in and like the level of violation that he maybe was feeling obviously not a reason for any violence to occur never mind a gunshot but never mind a gunshot yeah that's what we heard and yeah, I watched I mean. the... Okay, so that's that. Like I said, there was people who didn't believe her, and then that's where the information came from and why a lot of people don't believe her, and they feel like she um, was the aggressor, and then a lot of people who feel like the story just don't even add up. Even even if she wasn't the aggressor, the people feel like the story doesn't add up. Anyway, so moving on from that... Then you had people who created a whole petition to get Tory Lanez deported. So there were several people who signed this petition to get Tory Lanez deported back to Canada because of this situation, even though we don't know for sure if it was Tory. So people made up a um, petition so that people can sign it to get Tory Lanez deported. So in the petition, it says... um, Deport Tory Lanez, Daystar Peterson, back to Canada and ban him from coming to America forever. This little 5'3 man with a big ego has contributed nothing to the American economy and promotes violence and violence against women. Furthermore, he should be banned from the United States forever for intentionally trying to harm Megan Thee Stallion. Send him back to Canada ASAP. So... That's what the um, people were saying. With that being said, you guys let me know what you think about it. What do you think about Rihanna possibly dropping Drea, picking up Meg, her, whether or not you feel like she's a hypocrite for continuously working with actual abusers after the fact, um, but then dropping Drea, who just made a joke and wasn't an actual abuser, Um, What do you guys think about that? Let me know what you think down below. This video was more so mainly just to show you what social media is saying, how they're feeling, what they're reacting to the situation, and you guys letting me know what you think, what you feel about the situation. My heart still goes out to Meg. I send my condolences, not my condolences. Oop, child, the girl didn't die. Um, I send my heart out to her. I wouldn't want to be in that situation. I wouldn't want to be done that way. Um, it's sad situation all around, even though we do not have all of the story. We only have one side of the story. Um, I feel like there is more to come with this situation. So again, let me know what you think about Drea drop, uh, Rihanna dropping Drea. What do you think about 
Um, people's reaction to Meg about her story. Um, what do you think about all of it? I mean, a lot of people are tired of the story at this point. Like, there also was a lot of people who were like, listen, I don't even want to hear it no more because it's too vague. It's too many assumptions. It's too much, too much of a guessing game. It's too much, too much, too much. You know, people then started pointing fingers at Meg the Stallion's best friend. It just, it's, it's too much at this point. So, you know, I'm just giving you guys a further report on, you know, how Rihanna was being called out, how people are reacting and how some people still feel a certain type of way about whatever, whatever, whatever. Again, if you have not subscribed to my channel, make sure you hit the subscribe button right now. Not now, but right now. Also hit that like button and notification bell so you're notified when I post a video. And don't forget to hit up my website, neekatnight.com, to check out what I have available for your quarantine and chill needs. Now, the girls have sent in good reviews. They get good results when they're with their, you know what I'm saying, their little quarantine bay. Okay, and they put on one of my little pajamas, okay? So you might wanna hop on the train and go get one of your very own Neek at Night pajamas right now on my website, neekatnight.com. Okay? Okay. All right, guys.